And I would like to speak on the theme of our conference, the power and principle of destiny. Rob a man of his sense of destiny and you destroy his desire for living. Number two, absence of destiny is the source of depression. Point number three, destiny is the source of personal and national discipline. back home. I love Nigeria. I love it. Amen. Let's hold hands together, please. The word of God says, wherever any two shall touch and agree concerning anything on the earth it shall be done of our father who is in heaven let us pray father in heaven we thank you that you are here because you promised that where ever two or three are gathered in your name you are in the midst to bless. So we thank you. Thank you for sitting in our worship. Thank you for possessing our praise. Thank you for confirming your word with signs. Thank you for Shiloh 2006. Thank you for bringing 40 nations together to hear your voice. Thank you for all of us being destined to win. Help us, Lord, to discover your way and your will tonight. And may your kingdom come and your will be done in this place, just like it is in heaven. And we give you the praise. In the name of Jesus, our King and our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. First, I want to say it's a humbling privilege for me to be back at Shiloh. I have been coming here for the past five years, and I have grown to love, respect, and honor your founding visionary, your bishop, your chancellor, and your great pastor of pastors. I believe that Nigeria is blessed because of Bishop David Ayutupu. When God wants to bless a nation, he always looks for a person. And I believe that this man has been set apart by God to be the source of great positive blessing and development in this country. His vision for education is, in my view, his greatest contribution to this country because education will always outlive a man. And I want to encourage you, all of you who are members of the Living Word Ministries and Living Faith Ministries around this great continent and even parts of Europe to continue to support and pray for your founding bishop that he will live a long life and he will live a healthy life and that he and his lovely wife, Pastor Faith, will walk strong until their work is finished. We love them as family and we couldn't wait to come here. Thank you again, my twin brother. And I know that your bishop would agree with me that without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
Give God a hand for our first lady. Hallelujah. And my wife is my greatest blessing on earth. And I love you, baby. Amen. Shiloh 2006. The theme of this conference is so exciting. And I would like to speak on the theme of our conference. Please write this down. The power and principle of destiny. The power and principle of destiny. I want to begin with a few statements you might want to remember. Rob a man of his sense of destiny and you destroy his desire for living. Rob a man of his sense of destiny and you destroy his desire for living. Number two, absence of destiny is the source of depression. Absence of destiny is the source of depression. Point number three, destiny is the source of personal and national discipline. Destiny is the source of personal and national discipline. As we talk about being destined to win, it is essential to define what is destiny. Please write this down. Destiny is the ultimate end. Destiny is defined as the ultimate end of a thing. Secondly, destiny is established purpose. Established purpose. Thirdly, destiny is the final address. The final address. Fourthly, destiny is the finish line of the race. Destiny is the finish line of your race. Number five, destiny is the desired result. Destiny is the desired result. Sixth, destiny is the predetermined end of a thing. Destiny is the predetermined end of a thing. Destiny, number seven, is the reason for existence. Destiny is the reason why a thing exists. Therefore, destiny is the purpose for the creation of a thing. I am convinced that every nation was created by God to fulfill a purpose and destiny every nation. I am therefore convinced that every African nation was created by God to fulfill a role in the world. I am also of the conviction that oppression is designed to destroy the destiny of a people and a nation. I am also of the persuasion that your value as a nation 
is found in the revelation of your national destiny. Every nation was created by God to fulfill a specific destiny in the universe of nations. But the value of that nation will only be found when that nation and its leaders discover their national destiny. Therefore, I believe that national leaders, whether they are politicians or church leaders or educators or business leaders, all national leaders must discover the nation's destiny and purpose in order to lead that nation effectively. God creates nations. And God creates nothing without a purpose. Acts chapter 17, verse 26, says these words. From one man, God made every nation of men. God made them. And he made them that they should inhabit the whole earth. He determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. Verse 27, God did this. He created nations so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, even though he is not far from each one of us, end quote. We find in this verse, Paul stating that God created every nation. He determines their location. He determines the people in them. And he determines the length of their lives. And he creates nation, he says, so that people can know him. God created Nigeria. God created South Africa, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Botswana. He created every nation, Ghana, England, the Bahamas. God created nations and all of these nations have a destiny. And their destiny was to introduce men to God. This is why I am convinced that this ministry and that man and you are the most important people in Nigeria because the only way for people to be introduced to God is to have godly people in that nation that tell the nations about God. Therefore, I say without intimidation or fear that this ministry and all of you who are related to it you are destined to win because of your ministry God delivers people for a purpose when God brings the people out of slavery out of oppression he does it for a reason Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 11 says and the Lord said surely I will deliver you for a good purpose God delivered you from your history because he had a destiny on his mind he set you free from oppression because he had a purpose for this nation and for your nation and wherever you are from those 40 nations God made your nation a nation because he has a purpose for your people. Acts chapter 6, 13, verse 36 says, For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. 
I quote again Acts 13 verse 36. It says, for when David the king had served God's purpose in his generation, he fell asleep. I believe God gives people birth not just to make a living, but to make a difference in their nation. God gave David birth to serve his nation in his generation. And God gave you birth to serve your nation and your generation. So don't just focus on paying your bills and making a living. Focus on making a difference in the world before you die. The word purpose is the same word as destiny. And I believe that God's greatest investment that he ever put in man was his destiny. Destiny is God's desire. Write that down, please. What is destiny? God's desire. What is destiny? God's desire. Destiny can be defined as God's desire. Whatever God desires to have becomes the destiny of a thing. Destiny is God's desire and God's desire becomes his purpose. Therefore, destiny is purpose. Whatever God purposed to have, that becomes his desire. And whatever God desires becomes his destiny for that thing. Therefore, destiny is God's predetermined result for his creation. I repeat, destiny is God's predetermined result for his creation. Please remember this and write this down. Every created thing has a destiny. The roach and the rat, the cow and the horse, the bird and the fish, the seed in the ground, all came to this planet with destiny. Destiny is the source of meaning for your existence. Please write this down. Destiny is the key to fulfillment. Until you reach your destiny, you can never be fulfilled. If a seed never becomes a tree, it has never fulfilled itself. If a fish never swam, it never achieved its destiny. If a bird never flies to the sky, it has not fulfilled its destiny. Destiny is the measure of success in life. Destiny is the measure of success in life. This is why you must be aware tonight that you do have a destiny. You were born with and for a destiny. Please write that down. You were born with and for a destiny. I was born with and for a destiny. Say it with me. I was born with and for a destiny. Say it again. I was born with and for a destiny. That's important to remember because you don't go to your destiny. Your destiny is not ahead of you. You were born with it. Seeds do not go to trees in the future. God always hides the destiny of a thing in the thing. So the future of a seed is within it. The future of a bird is within it. The future of a fish is within it. And this is why God always hides a man in little boys. 
He hides great women and little girls. You don't go to manhood. You become a man. You don't go to womanhood. You become the woman you were born to be. Your destiny came with you and you with it. And therefore, please write this down, very important. Destiny is established but can be aborted. Destiny is established but can be aborted. Every seed does not have to become the tree. It is possible to sabotage your destiny even though you carry it within you. Please write this down. Decisions determine destiny. Say it. Decisions determine destiny. One more time. Decisions determine destiny. Think about it. No matter how great you were born to be, destiny is always at the mercy of decisions. I repeat, destiny is always at the mercy of decisions. You were born to be great. You were born to be powerful. You were born to make an impact in your nation. I know that. But your decisions can destroy your destiny. Your destiny is a victim of your obedience or disobedience. I repeat, your destiny is dependent on your obedience or disobedience. You are great as a man. You are great as a woman. The world has not seen a great man like you yet or a great woman like you yet. But God has called you to this mountain to tell you your destiny will be determined by every decision you make from this mountain. Your destiny is established by God but determined by you. I repeat, your destiny is established by God, but it is determined by you. The graveyard is filled with books that were never written. The cemetery is filled with music that was never played. The graveyard is filled with paintings that were never painted. The cemetery is filled with churches that never opened. The cemetery is filled with businesses that never became reality. Why? Because people's decision destroyed their destiny. Even Jesus Christ had to struggle for a moment with a decision that could have destroyed his destiny. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he was in the valley of decision and he said, is there another way to do this? Take this cup from me. He said, but nevertheless, not my will. Everybody say my will. You got to be careful with your will. Make sure your will submits to his destiny for your life. Not my will, but thine be done. Ladies and gentlemen, Listen to me and I beg you, I come with a passion for this. Your decisions are personal, but they are never private. I repeat, and please write it down. My decisions are personal, but never private. Jesus was struggling with a personal decision. But it was not a private issue. If he had decided on his personal decision, he would have affected the whole world. That is why your destiny is important to all of us. Whatever you were born to do is important to me and to your nation. Dr. David Ayedipu could have decided, I'm gonna be a businessman, I'm gonna have a family, I'm going to build a private house, put a wall around it. I'm going to get a nice car. I'm going to live big. I'm just going to be a businessman. And the nation of Nigeria would have been robbed of this ministry. Your destiny 
is hanging on your personal decisions. And whether you win or lose your destiny depends on whether you obey the Holy Spirit's instruction every single day and surrender your private ambitions to his generational assignment. I belong to my country, the Bahamas. I have a wife and two children. I was born in the Bahamas on a small island seven miles wide. I went to the United States for my university degrees. I got five degrees from university. And when I was about to leave, all Roberts asked me a question. I was working for the university at the time, and he said, will you stay in America and work for us? We need your talent. We need your gift. We need your anointing. You are a great man. I will pay you anything you ask. I will give you a house. I will give you a car. Just stay and work with me. I looked at him and said, sir, I cannot stay with you. I must go back to my nations, the third world nations, because I was born to be with them. And some of you believe that your private comfort is more important than your generational assignment. I went back to my country with nothing but an assignment. And today, in 27 years, God has raised up a work from just seven of us to become the largest ministry in the country. And listen to me, when you go to the government's website, the Bahamas government website, you will find my face. Destiny is the difference between a job and a nation. You are attached to this ministry because this ministry is not interested in religion. This ministry is interested in impacting the entire continent of Africa and changing it for good. That's what we are about here in this place. This is Shiloh, where we come to hear God's voice to go back and fulfill our destiny. And your destiny will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Please write this down. Destiny is the key to confidence. Destiny is the key to confidence. You know, when you discover your destiny, you become bold. When you discover your destiny, there's suddenly no competition in your life with anyone else. When you discover your destiny, you become free from other people's opinions. Uh. When you discover your destiny, you suddenly discover your true ability. This is why birds never attend flight school. This is why fish never attend swimming lessons. And this is why a seed will never attend a tree growing convention. Why? Because the bird knows that its destiny is built in. Flight exists in the bird. Swim exists in the fish. Trees exist in a seed. And your future exists in you. You are carrying your future. Hallelujah. One day, I went to the poorest country in the world, in the West. That's the nation of Haiti. And when I went to Haiti, when I came off the aircraft, I was shocked to discover that the United Nations have determined that this nation was the poorest nation in the world per capita. And yet, I was shocked when I saw in the poorest country in the world, birds flying. I couldn't believe it. Listen to me. I was shocked in the poorest country in the world. I saw a tree growing. Oh, I was shocked. 
I said, ah! <laughs> yeah. You see, the seed didn't care what the conditions were according to people's opinions. Its future was not in the United Nations. It was in the seed. Oh, I'm talking to somebody now. The bird didn't know that Haiti was the poorest country in the world because the bird knew it didn't need the economy to fly. Its flight was built on the inside. I have come to make an announcement sent by God to you today. The Holy Spirit says it doesn't matter what your nation is like, how poor it is, what your village is like. Your future is not dependent on where you live. It depends on the inside. Get ready to fly. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, if you knew what I was carrying, you would shake my hands right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your value, oh, listen to me. You were created with a destiny and for a destiny. And your destiny is the source of your self-worth and your value. This is very important because over the past 100 years, we in this continent, yes, we, I used to be here. We were robbed of our value. They stole away our self-worth. And ever since colonialism, we've been struggling to find our value in the world. And this is why it is so difficult for African nations to become members of the Security Council in the United Nations. They think you are not valuable. But I've come to tell you they are wrong. Oh, hallelujah. Oh! Your value is not in other people's opinions of you. Your value is in what you're carrying and you're carrying God's destiny. God told Israel, I didn't choose you because you are a big nation. I didn't choose you because you were the most powerful. I chose you and that's enough. And I've come to tell you, God has chosen Africa to be the next move of God in the 21st century. Oh, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, we are that important to the world. Listen to me. There are only three worlds on planet Earth. First world, Europe. Second world, Americas. 21 world left. It's the third world. And Jesus gave a prophecy. And I prophesy his prophecy again. He says, I have no more worlds to use. I tried the first world, they failed. I tried the second world, they failed. Now I've turned to the third world nations. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Jesus said, <laughs> The first shall be last, and the last. Hallelujah! 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 Stand up on your feet and shout hallelujah! shout it's our time stand up on your feet and shout it loud it's our time one more time it's our time clap your hands and give God a praise it's our time
today my voice is heard every week by 1.7 billion people my face is seen every week by 1.6 billion people my books are in 87 countries and look at my color My value, my value to the world did not come from my education. My value came when I discovered that I was born with a destiny that no one could stop. Hallelujah. And I've come to declare to you, my family, your destiny can never be stopped. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You are not better than anybody else. It's just your time. You were predestined for life. And predestination is the source of peace. Write that down, please. I'm a very peaceful man. I don't worry about a thing. Why? Because my future is God's past. Let me try one more time. I am full of peace because my future is God's past. I'm going to try just one more time. I am full of peace. I don't worry about anything because my future is God's past. Everybody say predestination. Write the word down, please. Predestination. Predestination is not a word. It's what they call in English grammar a grammatical construct. It's a prefix and a word put together to create a new word. So please, let's find out what predestination means. Write it down again, but take away the prefix. Just write P R E. Pre means before. Write it down, before. Now write the word destination. Destination or destiny means, write this down, the end. The end. Put the two back together and you have this meaning. Predestination means to set the end before you begin. Predestination means to establish the end before the beginning. This is very important for us because all creators and manufacturers never begin with the beginning. <laughs> no manufacturer, no creator of anything begins with the beginning. All creators and manufacturers finish before they start. <laughs> if you want to build an official house in Nigeria, <laughs> if you want to build an official house in Nigeria, you have to submit a finished plan to the government 
before they allow you to begin. And when they are satisfied that you are finished, then they give you permit to begin. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have come to make an announcement to my family. And that announcement is this. You were finished before you began. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says, For he chose you in him before the creation of the world. For he chose you in him before the creation of the world. When were you chosen? Before the earth even existed. <laughs> As a matter of fact, God made the earth because you were already chosen. He needed some place for you to fulfill your destiny. So he made planet earth. You pre-existed earth. You were not chosen by your mother and father when they went to bed. As a matter of fact, they went to bed because you were chosen. For the Bible says, to everything there is a season. And to every purpose there's a time. A time to be born. That means God had you in him for thousands and millions of years. And God knew that you were born, supposed to be born in this generation. So God, how'd your mother and father go to bed so he can get you in the earth in a dirt suit to fulfill your assignment in your generation? And therefore, it doesn't matter whether you were born in wedlock, out of wedlock, beside the lock, no lock at all. It doesn't matter anymore. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. In heaven, there is no such thing as an illegitimate child. There are only illegitimate parents. Every baby born of woman is pure and God's heritage and was sent with a destiny to fulfill an assignment. And I guarantee you, friends, your destiny brought you here. Oh, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Listen to me, please. You are not going to your destiny. Your destiny is pulling you toward it. Hallelujah! And that is why when you ain't got no money, you're still being pulled by destiny. When you are sick, you're still being pulled by destiny. Everybody leaves you, you are still being pulled by destiny. Your destiny will win. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he could endure the cross and the shame and the pain because he already saw his end. Have you seen your end? But once you've seen your vision, it's too late. You will make it to your vision in Jesus' name. Listen, Ephesians 1 verse 4, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Listen to this verse. In love, he predestined you. Hallelujah. In accordance with his pleasure and will. Everybody say predestined. The Bible says, he took your destiny and set it before you arrived. 
Ephesians 1 verse 11, please read. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11, very important verse. It says, in him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in a conformity with his purpose and his will. Ladies and gentlemen, this verse changed my life when I was a teenager. This verse tells me awesome things. First it says that God chose me because I was predestined according to his plan. That means God finished me before he started me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God didn't create you and then walked around scratching his head trying to figure out what to do with you. God created you because there was something needed on earth that made you necessary. Your existence is proof that there's something already finished that you were born to start. I'm going to try one more time. The fact that you exist is proof that there's something already finished that you were born to start. I'm going to try just one more time. The fact that you exist is proof that there's something already finished that you were born to start. Please turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 46. Romans 8 says, we were destined according to his purpose. Romans 3, 8 verse 30 says, and those he predestined, he also called and he justified. Romans 31 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Isaiah 46, verse 8, listen to God. Oh, this is so good. God says to the prophet Isaiah, he said, tell the people, remember this. <clears throat> Put it in your mind. Put it in your heart, he says, and don't rebel against it. Verse 9, I am God and there is none like me. I am God and there's none beside me. Verse 10, I am God. And there's none like me. Why? Because I am the only God who sets the end before the beginning and make known from ancient times what is yet to come. I say my purpose will stand. Oh, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. God says there is no God like me. Why? He said, he said, because there's no one else who can set the end first and then back up and start. <laughs> God says, I never begin with the beginning. I always end things first then I pack up and I stop things <laughs> that means whenever God begins something that is proof it's already finished They say when a man and woman has intercourse and a man releases semen, and sperms, scientists have recorded that every time a man releases sperm, an average five 
hundred million sperms are released every time. Could you imagine God looking down from heaven at your mother and father? <laughs> and God, and God is watching your mother and father in the house, in the car, in the hotel, in the bush. Watch this. And God looks and he sees 500 million sperms dash toward the egg. And they're all fighting, trying to get to the egg, swimming. And God says, mm, I want, let's see, that one. Guess who that was? Next time you don't think you are valuable, remember this, 499 million sperms died so that you could live. Give God a praise and give him praise. Come on. Listen to his voice again. He says, I chose you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because there was something in 2007 that I needed done that made you necessary. So you are not a mistake. Your destiny brought you to planet Earth. Welcome to your destiny. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are not an experiment. You didn't hear what I said. I said you are not a divine experiment. You are an earthly assignment put here to fulfill your destiny. Listen to me. Listen. Please. Listen. Woo. Shh. Listen. Listen. Very important. Whenever a manufacturer makes a product, he always tells you what it can do before you use it. <laughs> Why? Because he knows he has built into that product everything necessary for that product to fulfill its assignment. Follow me. And the manufacturer always says, here's your warranty and your guarantee. Why? They guarantee the product will fulfill its destiny and they make promises to you they say if it doesn't work send it back to us we will fix it and send it back to you oh oh they say if a part is broken don't try to fix it yourself uh, send it back to the manufacturer and he will put back in it genuine parts and send it back to the marketplace listen why does a manufacturer make so many commitments to his product it's not because he loves the customer he don't even know you. Help me, Lord. Why does a manufacturer guarantee his product 
not because he loves you you're the customer he don't know you his commitment is to his product because his product has the manufacturer's name on it and he wants to protect his name and that is why the success of the product is important not to the customer but to the manufacturer because if the product fails it destroys the name and the reputation of the manufacturer that is why I prophesy oh thank you lift your hands and receive the prophecy God will make sure personally that you make it to your destiny not not for your name's sake but for his hallelujah hallelujah thank you thank you make it all the way pastor